Hey, folks, this is Rochelle Field. And Big Anklevich. Big, was it your idea to do this? No, it was yours. Big had this idea of <laughs> breaking this conversation up into little teeny pieces and spreading it out for the month of February, right? That, yeah, I guess that was my idea with this particular conversation. But the idea to begin with was your idea of, hey, they do NaNoWriMo where you write every day for a month. Well, let's do NaNoPodmo. Po, 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 po. Do? Let's do, <laughs> do po Remo, where you do and Steve podcast record month, where we record a podcast that airs every single day on that gets my goat. So that's what we're going to do. We've got this conversation. We may have to record a second one because. Oh, I, 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 yeah, we've got plenty to this say. This conversation only goes so far, but we say an awful lot in this one. You will enjoy it or not, depending on whether yeah. you enjoy those kind of things or not. Depending on if you're a woman, because you wouldn't listen to a podcast with Doonstief in the title if you're a woman. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, she gets enough Doonstiefing three days a month. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, Oida T, will you cut? Oh, shoot. Our Oida T doesn't participate in the that. Yeah, he didn't even show up today. Shoot. But it, this is kind of an experiment for us. I think it could be a positive one. More likely, we'll never repeat it. But. Who cares? So we're going to try every day in the month of February to put out an episode. How do they get these episodes? They just a new one is going to appear each day. A new one will appear if they're signed up for the feed for uh, that gets my goat. A new one will appear in their podcatcher every day. If they're not signed up for the feed, then they can go to the site and download it or play it and listen to it from the site or how, however they get their podcasts. They can do that every day. I'm kind of excited about this, just to see how it goes. Badly. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> All right, see you, folks. See you later. See you next time. Oh, oh see you tomorrow. Oh, right. Oh, I already have a bad feeling about this. Boys versus Girls, part six. Six? You are... Indeed I is. So should we do a uh, follow-up to our last That Gets My Goat, or should we have you do the subject that you wanted to talk about? Was there not something you wanted to talk about at lunch Comic-Con? today? Oh, at lunch today? Uh, wait, wait. What did you want to talk about at Comic-Con that you didn't get a chance to? Uh, it's been a real long time since I went to Comic-Con, so I've pretty much forgotten I don't remember what it was I was going to talk I thought I thought what I was going to talk about at lunch kind of dovetailed into what you were going to talk about, so we were just going to go with it. Mm. Okay. We were talking... See, the funny thing is that we recorded that weeks ago, that episode where we talked about Thor losing its director, and in the meantime, maybe we should look it up, but I don't have the energy. They have announced a new director for Thor 2... And he's a guy who did a few episodes of Mad Men and most recently Game of Thrones. Apparently the best episode of Game of Thrones he did. And that was enough for them to say, hey, we'll give you Thor, which to me is totally fine. I'm not one of those people that thinks that TV is a step down from movies. Uh, quite the opposite. In yeah, these cases. days it's a total step up. And I think you mentioned that during lunch we can today. Talk. Should I talk about that now? And Yeah, let's talk about that okay. now. Yeah, that was what I was kind of saying when we were at lunch. So let's go ahead and replay that conversation. Well, these fries are good. They are good. I'm, I'm really. It's weird that usually they're so dried up and crusty, but today they're fresh. You are. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, totally saying that when we were at lunch. That TV, it seems to me, has surpassed basically what uh, movies do. It's like back in... The 50s, when TV first came out, and all these people are like, wow, we can get movies right here in our house. This is the greatest thing. And everybody gathers around. The whole neighborhood comes over to somebody's house, owns the TV, and they all sit there and watch the television to see Jackie Gleason or whatever. And all of a sudden, movies are like, oh, crap. We're not going to have any business if we don't do something to be better than TV. And so they're like, well, TVs are square. We're going to be widescreen. And so they make widescreen, and movies have been widescreen ever since. And they're like, we need 3D! And they do 3D with 
terrible glasses that looks awful and makes you ill. Way better than 21st century 3D. <laughs> and then they go, we need, a, you know, huge, we can spend money and we can have flying planes and we can have giant sets. And these are all the kind of things that TV can't do. We'll do great, huge spectacles of, you know, movies like Lawrence of Arabia where you can go out to the freaking desert and have these gigantic... 70 millimeter you know films that are shot and sadly the first time i saw lawrence of arabia it was on a 19 inch no 13 inch tv and it was letterboxed so it was so widescreen that uh yeah there was a lot of times where i would look at a shot and go uh is that just a like a scenery shot or is there something in that shot i'm supposed to see because if there is i can't tell what it is but yeah i purposely waited to see lawrence of arabia till i could see it on the big screen oh yeah um and so yeah i didn't see it until they did a screening of it in la and uh, oh cool but i remember one of the oscars it's a joke that we always point uh, yeah. i believe it was when john, john stewart. stewart was hosting he came back from commercial and he's watching something on his little iphone and he looks up and he's like yeah, you haven't seen Lawrence of Arabia until you've watched it on an iPhone. And then he goes, oh, but you got to look at it widescreen. And he turned it sideways as though this is going to make it any bigger. But uh, yeah, that, that was basically my experience. Except with an iPhone, you can bring that thing right to your face. With a you know a TV, you're still going to sit on the couch across the room from it, unfortunately. But uh, that was the kind of crap that they did in the 50s with movies. Trying to compete with television. Trying to compete with television. They did huge spectacles and so many of the films that they made, you know, they were all about spectacle and story went out the window and character and, you know, acting and all that stuff wasn't as important and it wasn't, you know, dwelt upon. Maybe I'm trying to figure out what it is that they're trying to compete with now. Television. I guess, but television has always been there. Why are they suddenly trying to do something to compete with television uh, 50 years later, you know? But but for years and years and years, for, for a, half a century, television was considered the ugly stepchild yeah. of film. And, you know, there were movie stars and then there were TV stars and ne'er the twain would meet. And but, every now and then you get one that jumps from TV to movies and they're like, oh, like a Michael this J. Fox or a, really or a Bruce Willis it. or John Travolta kind of thing. But right. still, television was frowned upon. Even when you and I were in college, television was still that ugly stepchild. Then, and I, I don't know what it was. There had to have been something. Maybe it was The Sopranos that suddenly it started to shift. And the quality, well, can you think of something that it would have been? A certain show that everybody's like, holy cow, dude, forget whatever's at the theater right now. Yeah, I don't know if it was a certain particular show, but I think it was just people realized, hey, if we stop doing the whole episodic thing where you can tune in anytime and watch these shows in any order and it doesn't matter because everything resets at the end of the episode and they switched it over to where instead it's each week builds on the last week. Serialized. Yeah, serialized soap opera type shows where something happens each time that's, you know, changing your characters and, and making them grow and et cetera, et cetera. Suddenly they started doing that with all sorts of stuff. And TV's gotten so much better. And it's so much more interesting. And you look at the movies out there. And this year was a terrible year for movies. They did not do well. They did not sell a lot of tickets. And I think there's a few reasons behind that. Sadly, I saw a news story where they're like, and the reason is because people can get videos right on their iPad or their iPhone. And I thought, what? Well, how is that any different than when people could get videos right at the store and watch it in their house and their VCR? It's not like renting movies is a new phenomenon. How is it that suddenly people don't go out to the movies because of that? I don't think that has anything to do with it. Well, I don't know. Do you think I'm wrong or does that sound like the most ridiculous argument that you've ever heard? Well, the studios are all pointing fingers and just trying to figure out who to blame. And that, and everybody has their own theory. But yeah, that you can get stuff on the iPhone. That sounds like something that a studio would spin. I mean, a studio that's not Sony. Somebody like that. Where they're just <laughs> like, yeah, it's those guys. They did it. They screwed us over. How does that screw them over, though? But it, it was exactly like that in the late 70s when the VCR came about. Yeah. And people were 
they oh they were quaking you know it's oh it's all over for theaters it's all over for for movies but no if anything it gave new life movies like the terminator that didn't do all that well in the theater suddenly got a huge following on video yeah. all it did was give them another window that they can release their uh, movie into instead of just in the theater and then the tv you know, you can do the, the when they show it on television. Now you have in the theater and then you have the DVD slash VHS. Oh, of course, the VHS has gone away now. But, you know, you had that window and uh, added on to that. You, you would think it wouldn't hurt studios in any small amount. Yeah, maybe a few people go to less movies because they can get it on their iPad. But they're paying to get it on their iPad. So they get the money no matter how they get it. To be continued next time. That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License, which between you and me means nothing. Yeah, you're like, this is somebody that I, I like, somebody I, I think has more of a brain than uh, who was it that you mentioned before, your uh, cousin's wife or who it was, Jeff's wife, somebody's wife. It was my wife. cousin's wife, but I, I don't know you that don't I want to say that. Okay. She doesn't have a brain. <laughs> Uh, she went to the wizard and he gave her one. Oh, good.